800-885-3333. Past performance Libertarian may not be future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. And now, here's Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back. It's been a, uh, another, oh, I'd say pretty ordinary season or a seasonal return uh, this time of year is uh, actually, um, I, I take that back. September, if you look back over the history of the stock market, September has a tendency not to be a really good time. Um, but uh, most people, if they remember the big crash, if they're old enough to remember, there were two big upsets in October. They came in and uh, shook everybody up pretty good. Uh, but the uh, oh, you know the all the corrections that we've had over the past I don't know probably 15 years have recovered relatively quickly. They're deep enough to scare people, and uh, but they have a tendency to recover fairly fast and then go on to new highs, and that's what's uh, really tough. In fact, if you just took out the top 50 stocks out of the S&P 500 and invested in them. Um, you're, you'd see where all the returns are coming from because they are overwhelmingly doing better than the other 450 stocks. And along those lines, um, I decided watching all this and seeing it slowly evolve, that's, that's the interesting thing about this, the stock market. It's evolved at least as much as the rest of society. And when you look at uh, how quickly society is evolving, evolving and how many new products are coming out and becoming mainstream um, fairly quickly. Yeah, it's pretty mind-boggling, actually. So, and uh, S&P is driving that. Uh, those top 50 names are make up a large percentage of that. And uh, so I decided to take what I was seeing uh, developing. And incidentally, it you're always looking into the past trying to develop what might work better going forward. So um, there's always there's a danger in doing that. Uh, if you uh, build your models so that the past has to replicate itself exactly the way that it went on in the past, it's not going to do it again in the future. And that could lead to uh, some really crappy performance. So it is a, it's tough. Building models is not easy. Ask uh, BlackRock or Vanguard or Fidelity for that matter. The uh, uh, or S and P, you know, SPDRs you know, got a ton of ETFs out there. But anyway, um, valuations are slightly on the high side. Uh, when I say slightly, you know, the average range for the New York Stock Exchange uh, is 50% a year for the stocks that trade there. And that's considered the, the premier exchange in the in the world. So if the average range is fifty percent, that's a uh, that's a little rough. Um, and you, you know, if you ever find if you ever put together a, a portfolio of stocks and start watching them, uh, you'll see. Now, if you do it long enough, you'll see. But uh, anyway, the uh, interest rates <clears throat> seem to be hanging pretty steady. Uh, 
I wouldn't doubt that they start to cut interest rates um, sometime soon. You know, they're talking about doing it now. And uh, so all those uh, short-term CDs that are actually paying more than longer-term CDs or treasuries, uh, their rates will start to come down. And that's the tough part about, again, predicting financial market. And uh, somebody should have left us a, man- a manual somewhere along the lines. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it's just the way that it works. It, trying to predict the future with a high degree of accuracy is not easy. General trends, not as difficult. Like if you were to ask me make a prediction over the stock prices in general, let's say the Russell 3000, that's the top 3,000 companies. It makes up 99% of all the stock in the United States. Yeah, I would say, yeah, 10 years from now, it's probably going to be uh, fairly significantly higher. And uh, when I say fairly significantly, I'm talking probably at least 50%. Um, but if you ask me where it's going to be next year, I'm, this is not my first rodeo. I know better than to give you an answer for that because nobody knows. <laughs> uh, do I know uh, where the valuation levels are? Yeah, but I've seen them a lot more overvalued than they are today, and I've seen them uh, considerably undervalued. So if you go from overvalued to undervalued, then you've got a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and uh, undervalued means that share prices have come down significantly. And uh, uh, if that happens, this is one of the reasons that you always want to have some money in, in fixed income. I don't even care how old you are. Younger people out there that, that may be listening, uh, they're typically not a big part of my audience, but the number of people that, uh, uh, if you are listening, this is one of the reasons that you still have fixed income in your portfolios, even if you're in your 40s. Um, probably won't be a lot. Okay. And it's mainly for psychological reasons. You know, when the uh, market starts going down a lot, if you've got some money in fixed income, you could actually add to your stock holdings. And psychologically, it makes you feel a whole lot better, even if it's not that much money. And uh, um, so that's, a, uh, that, and that's an important issue for everybody. I, mean, I don't care how old you are. You're in your 70s. If you make it to your 70s, there's a pretty good chance you'll be around for at least another 10 years. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's a long time. So um, you should have some, even though if it's only a little bit of money. But again, it really comes down to this, the person's situation. Uh, if you've got $100 million or $10 million and, um, or even several million dollars and you don't spend a whole lot, well, you could actually just leave your money wherever you want. You know, the world is your oyster. <laughs> you can, you don't have to worry about having to sell stocks when they're at lower prices uh, or even waiting for them to come back because you weren't going to spend the money anyway. So it's, and I know that's not all that common. And what is more common is that uh, you have to look out at what you're going to be spending and figure out how much income you're going to be getting from Social Security and um, pensions. Uh, what's the best way to manage your money? That's that's really what this show is all about. It, it's not about the rich. Uh, it's not about the extremely poor. It, it's about everyone. Uh, what do you do if you if under say? What if you do if you if you're really really comfortable? Even if you're really comfortable, I can't tell you how many people I've I've met who were really comfortable. Primarily because they had been really good savers and uh, had given it an extremely long time period, more than 30 years. So they had to have a significant amount of assets. And um, But because they were uncomfortable thinking about retirement, uh, it actually helped them to put more money away. And now they have to, to deal with, okay, now that I'm not working anymore and I'm relying on my savings for income, uh, what do I do? Can I lock it all away? And, and the answer is, yeah, you can lock everything away. You can get a pretty good uh, return right now on fixed annuities, on income annuities. And uh, there's one that I like a lot. We'll talk a little bit late, more about that later. But I know a lot of people that can get by easily just on that and don't really even need any growth. 
Um, that's not most of us. Uh, most of us are going to have to have some money in stocks, and we're going to have to have a long enough time horizon to be able to leave that money in those stock accounts that we don't have to use them to fund our retirement because that would be that could be catastrophic if you're relying on your stock account to produce the income that you might need in retirement uh, and you're taking out more than four or five percent there's a pretty good chance that we'll live through another big correction that takes a long time to recover and you'll probably have to cut back on your lifestyle um and that that's not something that most people look forward to in retirement. Most people look forward to being able to uh, travel and do a lot of other things that they would like to do that they haven't done during their lifetime. And um, you know, it, it, actually, I, I I really have to say that everybody's different. I've uh, met so many people, and that's one of the things I like about this business is. It, there's a wide variety of, of personalities out there. And if I've learned anything, it's when you're sitting down to try to figure out, you know, what, what's the financial future going to look like? Well, um, you really need, everybody has a different picture of what that is, what they may want it to be. Um, now, they're going to be constrained by the amount of savings that they have. Uh, and I shouldn't say constrained. It, it should set up guidelines. So uh, how much you save is going to set up guidelines. Now, how you invest that is going to have a big impact on what you're able to take out during retirement. Um, I'm not, not going to tell you it's easy, uh, but for most people, it's relatively doable. And uh, you know, if you have any questions on any of that, would like to sit down and see what an estimate might be uh, for yourself, you, we can do those meetings on the phone, actually. Uh, we can do them on the phone or in person, and uh, that's basically uh, what I do. How? What's your risk tolerance? And incidentally, um, this is one of the areas where the industry itself, for years, they had these questionnaires that were like 30 questions or 40 questions, uh, 20 if you're lucky, <laughs> and they asked you all kinds of stuff that uh, really didn't help in the way of um, figuring out how what, what kind of risk taker you were. And I had used this relatively simple question uh, on my questionnaire that I came up with myself. And I'd been using it for years and years and years. And I just, it's so funny that uh, just within the past three or four years, really big financial planning firms, the Orions of the world, uh, the Morning Stars, um, Mornings are not quite as much, but Orion's of the world, they're the biggest uh, financial services uh, service provider that, that's in the in the United States. And so they adopted the same questionnaire that I've been using uh, for, you know, since the beginning of my career. And that's basically how much of a decline in your portfolio can you withstand? How much are you willing to see it fluctuate? Because, if again, if you're not super rich, you're probably going to have to have some money in managed accounts, in, in stocks, some way, shape, or form. Individual stocks, ETFs. By the way, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, individual stock portfolios. Uh, I was a really big fan for a really long time of doing individual stocks. And then ETFs came out. And they, uh, if you can name a strategy, there's an ETF out there that's doing it for most of the conventional strategies. And they went from, I think there were four when I started my practice, and uh, now there are several thousand. Uh, there are actually more ETFs than there are stocks to invest in, which I think is funny. Uh, and uh, But it took them forever to come up with the same relatively basic, simple formula that I'd been using, uh, came up with on my own, um, but uh, with a lot of a lot of work. I paid for a lot of professional research. I still do. And um, so it's not like I uh, went out and gathered all the data, did all that stuff. Uh, I just had an idea, and I said, hey, can you help me test this idea? And yes, but 
going to cost you this much money. You're going to have to get this software. You're going to have to run these computers. That's funny. I, back in those days, it was actually you even had to have a certain processor um, that would work on these for these software packages because they were using so much data. And uh, now it's like you you know it's under a thousand bucks at Best Buy. You can, <laughs> those computers will run the same thing. The uh, it's hilarious. So anyway, this stuff has evolved, and the financial planning industry um, made moves in my direction, which I I have been I feel completely exonerated by because for years they tried to make people like me feel bad. You're not really uh, um, doing the right things. You need to ask all these other questions. You mean those unrelated questions or the questions that get people to um, imagine things that they're not going to be able to do, like you're suggesting what, what, what kind of sports car you would like, what kind of vacations around the world you want to take in retirement, and uh, knowing full well that these, some of these people have kids later in life and they're still paying college tuition and they're not going to be able to afford to do that. The uh, <laughs> It was the uh, was really uh, kind of uh, it just really ticked me off a little bit uh, because it wasn't and then it wasn't really addressing the risk profile. The uh, they ask you all these questions that related to risk, but really didn't get down to the nitty gritty. And that's basically this. This is what they uh, what I've been using. What they finally incorporated is hey look. How much of a decline are you willing to put up with in an effort to make a uh, a decent return? Decent in your eyes, by the way. The, uh, uh, if you can get by on 4 or 5% or 4%, now those rates are going down again, by the way, because the economy has been slowing down like crazy. Uh, and they could go down a lot further um, before they start to come back up again. But uh, how much risk do you need to take? And that's something that you need to consider, incidentally, when you're doing your retirement income plan. Yeah, this is where interest rates are today. Where are they going to be five or ten years from now? Now, nobody really knows that. So you have to factor that unknown factor in. How do you do that? Well, you might want to start by uh, taking a more conservative. You're getting a, uh, if there's a money market that we're using and it's paying 5%, well, maybe you only want to spend 4% of it. And incidentally, you might have heard of the 4% rule. Um, the 4% rule came from a, a couple of studies that were done a long time ago that said uh, you could take out 4% and increase that amount for inflation each year out of your portfolio. And, um, more than 95% of the time, that will last at least 30 years, which is longer than the average retirement is. And uh, so still not a guarantee, but they felt like they were, uh, it was a, they were taking reasonable precautions by limiting that first year's payout to 4%. Now, they're, they're going to raise that by inflation, the, the actual study raised the 4% by inflation each year uh, and went back, and we call it back testing. They, they ran it over different types of portfolios. They had to make assumptions on what the returns were going to be. But they used empirical data, that's data that you know from the financial markets, and they came up with a 4%, and then you raise it for interest each year. Uh, there were a few years in a row a few years ago where interest rates had gotten lower than they had during World War II. You can imagine that. And uh, nobody under the age of 40 probably even thinks of that. <laughs> I know they don't. Cause I talk to them fairly frequently. But the uh, anyway, so I kind of like to factor in, uh, let's plan for the worst, hope for the best. And that for a lot of people that uh, they're not real keen on that, um, they think it's kind of negative. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I mean, if, if I'm planning to see not much of a return and, and the assets that I've saved will make it through that time period, uh, then anything else is just gravy. Uh, and uh, anything else, it's going to actually work pretty well. So I've got to take a real quick commercial break here in a few seconds. This is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. 
If you'd like to talk to me in person uh, or uh, set up a phone call, you can go to my website to set the appointment. The website's bullingtoncapital.com, and I will be back after these commercial messages. Bob Brandt's here, and if you are dealing with a leaky roof, we should probably take care of that sooner rather than later, don't you think? Quick call to Sky Roofing will get it done, 440-349-6750. Look, there are a lot of roofing companies out there that want your business, but this isn't something you want to trust to a fly-by-night company. Sky Roofing is in it to stay. They've been serving Ohio homeowners like you and me for 24 years. That means they're doing it right by the roofs they repair, the roofs they replace, and the people that they serve. The pros at Sky Roofing have pledged to treat you your roof like it was one of their own homes. So if your roof is in disrepair, maybe you've got some gaps in the shingles, call Sky Roofing. And if your roof has been good to you, but it's just that time that all homeowners face and you have to replace it, call Sky Roofing. Check out their work and the testimonials at the user-friendly website, skyroofinginc.com. Then make that call, 440-349-6750. Call today, get a great quote, and treat your roof the way you need your roof to treat you. Sky Roofing is roofing done right. No doubt about it, we're spending more time at home, which is the perfect time to make it more functional and beautiful. Hi, Ed Flash Ferentz here for Artistic Renovations, Northeast Ohio's premier and award-winning remodeler. Artistic did a fantastic job with our kitchen in 2016, and last year, they were back for the master bath. Oh, my word. Do yourself a favor and go to ArtisticReno.com. Believe me, you'll love their ideas and without question, the finished product. For a virtual consultation, call 216-520-0838 or visit ArtisticReno.com. You listen to this radio station for truth at a time when truth is an endangered species. Now, we want to invite you to listen to our sister TV network, Salem News Channel. You'll find us in the App Store or online at SalemNewsChannel.com or on Roku or similar devices. You'll see Hugh Hewitt in the morning, followed by Mike Gallagher. You'll see Dennis Prager, followed by Sebastian Gorka. And at 5 Eastern time, our newest star, Andrew Wilkow, with Dinesh D'Souza at 7 Eastern. Salem News Channel, the antidote to the mainstream media. Thinking about updating your home? Well, Joyce Factory Direct specializes in replacing old, outdated windows. Proudly made right here in Cleveland, Joyce Windows features their exclusive Smart Shield High Performance Glass, which means you'll be getting the most energy efficient windows for your home directly from the factory. Customers just love how much warmer their house is and how easy their new windows operate and clean. Right now, you can save 50% on all installations. Just call to schedule a free consultation with on the spot pricing 440 243 5700 or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. Well, welcome back. Just the, uh, thinking about a couple of things here during the commercial break. And, uh, you know, it's been interesting the past, oh, I don't know, uh, two months, I guess. I've been uh, working really hard. I signed back up for a, uh, a Bloomberg terminal service. It's a very expensive research tool and it helps me build these models. And one of the models that I've always liked, uh, I stopped. By the way, I, I did this a long time ago, and I stopped doing it because uh, well, overwhelmingly, the people that were watching what was going on inside of the models uh, were getting upset. And why? Well, because they could see what was happening. It's a, uh, like that old saying you know, about seeing the sausage being made. You probably don't want to do that if you like sausage. <laughs> And uh, it's the same way with stocks. I mean, if you looked inside of the uh, exchange-traded funds, that that was one of the big benefits that I saw about the exchange-traded funds is that the fund itself could do what it needed to do without interference from an investor because they couldn't see what was happening anyway. All they were able to see was the end result. <clears throat> and that was a, uh, I thought, that is a, that is a great idea. And for a lot of people, you know, it still is. That's a great idea. Whenever you can see stocks that are uh, crashing, uh, you have a tendency to get upset. And I promise you, every single ETF that's out there has stocks that are crashing. And uh, and not just some of the time. 
I mean, even when market's going up, some stocks are going down. Even when the market's going down, some stocks are going up. So it and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to someone who doesn't do this every day for a living. In fact, it, it's mind-boggling how much movement there is, and, and that is really hard to accept for someone that is not a money management professional who doesn't manage stock portfolios. Uh, if they've picked other portfolio managers that are doing that and they've hired them to come on and manage money for their some of their clients, yeah, then, then they get to see it. But those guys mostly, I mean, was, it's been my experience that when you can see what's going into the portfolio, the uh, money management firms that are, are managing those assets understand that you can see it. And I think they, they try to stay away from stocks that have – more than average volatility, which is also going to reduce your returns a little bit, typically. So I'm not sure that's the uh, uh, the right answer, and that was the reason that I actually started using uh, the ETFs. I, I thought, this is great. They won't have to see all the transactions that are going on inside the fund. They just get to see the final results of the ETF industry lobbied Congress. and uh, got a waiver, a waiver so that they don't have to uh, report all those tiny transactions every year. So now you've got a big tax benefit, and um, uh, you know that that's great. Except that a lot of people look at a fund and they think a fund is a fund is a fund, or oh yeah, this one's just like that one. And uh, well, no. Because if there weren't a big enough difference, they would not have two funds out there, uh, unless it's like the giant indexes. I, you know, there's an exception to at least one exception to every rule in finance. Uh, but uh, anyway, bottom line is, if you want to be, uh, if you want individual stocks and you want to be more selective, which is kind of what I like to do with individual stock portfolios that I'll be running. Uh, then you go through, you take one of the um, list, or you just work with, say, I, look, I like the Russell 1500, or the Essence, yeah, yeah, Russell 1500. No, it's the mid cap. I think the S&P, it's the S&P 1500. Here I am getting, uh, there's so many index <laughs> publishers out there today. It's mind boggling. So anyway, the top 1,500 stocks in the country pick the same way they pick the S&P 500. It's basically by size. Okay. So you rank all those stocks for speed. How much, what are the 50 or 40 stocks? Um, doesn't really matter. It's 40 or 50, the numbers are about the same. Uh, they're still close here, just splitting here. So let's take the safe route. Let's say that we're going to go with the top 50 stocks over the past uh, six months. Which which of those stocks are out in front? Which stocks are leading right now? And those are the ones that we want. We want the ones that are that are going up the fastest. Or you know, if the market's all dropping, they're dropping slower. So we're going to rebalance the portfolio. Um, we've got to have a a custodian like a uh, uh, Goldman Sachs who has a platform that allows you to manage money this way. And uh, uh, you can go in and, and put all the securities, the symbols and the percentages in, and uh, just hit rebalance. And it will make your portfolio look just like that, uh, the growth portfolio, which I haven't even decided what the name is going to be yet. I was thinking about like the, the beat cap 40 and uh, start my own index. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So anyway, I would get, I just hit the rebalance button and it makes the current portfolio look just like the one that I just entered into the software. And uh, they don't make, uh, there's no sales charges on that. Uh, that's one of the other reasons that it works because it, even if you put just a couple dollars on each one of those transactions, it would uh uh, hurt the returns, De depending on the size of the portfolio, it could be pretty significant. So uh, that's one of the reasons it's really important that when you're doing this, you need to have a platform that doesn't have fees on the transaction. They're operating on a percentage of the assets 
uh, instead of fees. So don't try to write all this down, uh, especially if you're driving. You know, just call me. <laughs> the number is 330-664-0700. And, or you can go to my website, spoolingtoncapital.com, and uh, you can find out more about it. But uh, I've been, I'm kind of excited about it. I, I don't like to get too excited about it because it, it's a lot of work. And I'm still uh, at least another eight to nine weeks uh, away from being able to launch completely. So right now it's just very slow. And uh, I'll just put it, some of my money in. I always go first. And uh, we'll see what uh, what kind of problems we might run into. That's the other thing. When you're The more transactions you do, the more potential there is for a problem to flare up. And uh, with all the stuff that's been going on with computers over the past few months, it is mind-boggling. And it's, uh, if you're having trouble at home with your PCs, uh, just doing things, normal tasks that you normally do, there's a really good chance that it, it's not you. Uh, there's a really good chance that it's the service providers uh, or the uh, software companies themselves and uh, it's been exasperating ever since the uh, pandemic hit. Uh, it just, I don't know if that triggered something, uh, more people working from home or whatever, but uh, uh, if you've been experiencing some significant difficulties with getting online, keeping your accounts open, accessing your accounts, probably not you. It's actually the financial institutions that are out there, and they're changing their protocols fairly fairly frequently. So. Very difficult to keep up with. You only you, typically you don't find out until they've already changed it and they've locked you out, <laughs> and then you have to spend a couple of hours on the phone with uh, um, their tech support trying to get it logged back on. That has been exasperating, and uh, but you know what? Though I mean, it's one of the reasons that people have advisors because we're sitting there and doing it. You know, we're taking up that work on your behalf, and uh, it's a lot. I can't wait to, <laughs> to get it off my back, but uh, but you know, I'm happy to be able to do it. Uh, so, you know, keeping up with your stuff is not that easy to do. I'm always looking at ways of trying to improve that process, and uh, it has been. I mean, it's been a long road. A lot of the stuff that they're just now coming out with has been around for an incredibly long time. And, uh, but everybody that put has been putting out versions of this software has been putting it out before it's been complete. And then they come back and say, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna uh, add that at this point in time, really? The, uh, so I feel your frustration. I, I probably feel it more than most people because I have to do it for an awful lot of clients. And uh, being able to sit back and say, okay, well, what what do I think is gonna happen in financial markets and what can I do to and then I have to uh, add that in uh, what's actually going to be doable fortunately it really hasn't affected us in that aspect very much at least not yet anyway and uh, and it's already started to improve so I'm breathing easier <laughs> and uh, the, the really tough part is that when you get you get close to retirement age um, like the fixed income, the long-term average on, on fixed income, you know, if you look at the 10-year treasury going back 100 years or so, and uh, um, yeah, the average is somewhere between 4 and 6%. You know, it depends on the 10-year uh, rolling time period that you're looking at. Uh, some of them are really high. I mean, the 1970s, I, re I remember the uh, inflation of that period. Yeah, I was just a kid when uh, I was, but I was listening to the adults. And my dad was a uh, uh, subcontractor. He he was a carpenter. He ran a couple crews, and they built a lot of houses for a lot of the big developers. And uh, we were um, amazed at the level of increase in the pricing on the home. And you know, I'm just a kid, and I'm just I was like nine years old. And I'm listening to these guys, and that st sticks out in my mind because they were really uh, they were amazed that the pricing had moved up so much. And we haven't seen something like that since then. We've had some pretty high inflation. The 1980s were not 
you know, there's no cakewalk. Um, and the uh, inflation rate has kept going down a little bit. It fluctuates. I mean, it would kick up uh, along the way. But overall, the uh, uh, inflation rate actually went down until just a few years ago where it kind of bottomed out. And now it's been picking back up again. And uh, it's a very difficult thing to deal with when you are, especially when you're trying to to factor in inflation on your income that you're going to get in retirement. You know, it's very important that you take that into account. Uh, I know an awful lot of people that said, well, yeah, you know, if I could get five and a half percent, I'm I'm good to go, or six percent, and then they get a, a lifetime guaranteed income of six percent on an annuity, and uh, they buy it. And you know, if inflation happens to go up uh, four or five percent. A year, uh, that six percent is not going to be looking like it did when they bought it five to ten years from now. So you got to try to plan for both. That's why stocks will always. I'll always have some stock in my. I don't care how old I get. I'll always have some stocks. I like. Uh, I only have a couple stocks that I invest in directly anymore. Mainly because the models that I built and the uh, uh, ETFs that are available at the same time um, make it unnecessary and incredibly difficult to outperform. I mean, if you just take here's here's a here's a free model for you. Okay? Uh, go to Fidelity. Fidelity has these funds they call it the Select Fund. Uh, kick the gold fund out of there and uh, and rank all those funds by performance. Over the last six months, and I got about 60 seconds before I have to take a commercial break. So I'm going to finish this model before uh, when I come back. And uh, you're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420. Stay tuned because I'll be right back. I wish I knew when this mountain in my way is going to move. Hope it's okay to tell the we truth. had water seeping up the drain in the basement, and that's always alarming. She says, why don't we call the uh, Wyatt Works? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's those whistling plumbers. Everything was top-notch professional, but friendly and personal. And I liked that. I think women tend to like that in a different way than men, but we both appreciated all of that. Being an old guy, I'm impressed with young men who can present themselves like that. I got to tell you, the one line from your ads that sticks with me is, I'd rather starve than do business that way. And then when your men came to our house and did that work, I could tell that was not just a line on an ad. That was what they really mean. You guys lived up to your advertising. They are men of a higher caliber, definitely, definitely. Consider it done at WyattWorks.com. Wallacadoodle! Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook, Vacation Fixation. Is it finally time to update your bathroom? Bath Planet, a division of Joyce Factory Direct, specializes in replacing and converting old showers and tubs into new beautiful bathrooms in as little as one day. We have transformed thousands of bathrooms just like yours into a spa-like oasis that has homeowners excited to use their new bathtub or shower. Right now, all bath installations are 50% off. So call to schedule a free consultation with on-the-spot pricing. 440-243-5700 or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. Well, welcome back. This is 
Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. And, uh, you know, I, I almost forgot, and thanks to uh, my board operator for reminding me, that uh, uh, the Cleveland Grays has an event coming up. And we have a, uh, um, a caller in that uh, I wanted to talk to about it, just to kind of let you know if you don't know what the Cleveland Grays is. It's an armory that's in Cleveland. It's one of the older buildings in Cleveland one of the first uh, police forces, and it was militia. And it's really interesting. They've got a uh, really nice museum there. Uh, the building is nearly intact. It looks almost what it would have looked like if you uh, were down in, you were in this area in the late 1800s, which is mind-boggling. So, uh, Lenny, if you don't mind, uh, can... Okay, thank you. Nancy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> well, well, thanks for coming on this show. I uh, had well, thank you. I've been having. I uh, appreciate it. I've, like everybody else, I've been having uh, computer issues with our software vendors, and uh, they uh -huh. must have taken the weekend off. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So I don't have access to a lot of the tools that I normally do. And uh, okay. uh, anyway, I wanted to. Uh, have you on, and maybe uh, I could just invite you to explain the uh, um, what's going to be happening at the Cleveland Grays and, and uh, yes. give a little information on that. That'd be great. Okay, I'd be glad to. You want me to go yeah. ahead? Good. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yes, well, my name is Nancy Haas, and I'm here to let you know about a fabulous event that will be held on Saturday, September 20th. Uh, Sunday, September 20th, I'm sorry, and uh, at the Cleveland Grays Armory Museum. Uh, it's our main fundraiser for the Cleveland Grays Armory, and this year's theme of the tea is Tea with the Unsinkable Molly Brown, and she will be portrayed by Anne McEvoy from Women in History, Ohio, and she will uh, tell us all about the remarkable life of Margaret Molly Brown, uh, besides the tea, which is a catered tea by Clementine's Victorian Restaurant, there will be musical entertainment provided by an antique Rolex Surf Theater organ, which was obtained and installed in the Cleveland Grays in 1970. There will be a tour after the, after the presentation of the 1894 Historic Armory Museum. And so uh, there will be a wonderful time. Um, tickets are $50. And they can be uh, more information can be found at the Cleveland Grays website, www.graysarmory.org. There's a mail-in form option and no fee for that, or there's a link to Eventbrite for our uh, tea. Oh, that is that is awesome! Well, you did a much better job of that than I could have ever done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah, for those of the listeners that don't really know. Uh, the Cleveland Grays was a militia, uh, and uh, they actually served in the Civil War. And they looked at their, uh, um, if you look at it, it's the building that looks like a castle. Uh, and uh, I, I know it's on the uh, corner of Prospect. I can't remember the actual street address of it. I just know how to uh, get there. It's, <laughs> it's on Boulevard Road, which is right off of East 9th and near Prospect. Okay. Uh, the the building is wonderfully historic. It's one of the oldest standing buildings in Cleveland, and it was uh, built in 1894 uh, in the Richardsonian Romanesque architectural style. Oh, great! The uh, I was there once for a. Uh, uh, do they still have the the big organ there? Yes, in fact, there will be a musician, a professional musician, playing that organ as part of the entertainment before the uh, presentation. It's really wonderful. Right. Well, it's a theater organ that was uh, rescued from a, a theater that went out of business in uh, Pennsylvania. And it's been right. at the Cleveland Grace since 1970. Wow. That is, that's pretty awesome. But I, I remember thinking the first time I saw it, this is uh, something that I used to see in really old movies. And uh, um, to be able to see it again or in person, it's kind of, kind of, really unique and uh there's just a lot of really nice stuff there at uh, uh yes, there again is. The, yeah the building being so old that was it just it's yeah. amazing so 
then that's uh, on Boulevard Road in, uh, again, why don't I let you give out the contact information one more time. Okay, and, I will uh, do that. Well, the location, as I said, is uh, 1234 Boulevard Road. That's in Cleveland, Ohio. The contact information for more information about the T or to obtain tickets is through www.gracearmory.org. And at the site, you will be able to find a, a mail-in form that can be printed off, and we will accept checks, or a direct link to Eventbrite where uh, you can order your tickets through Eventbrite. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for calling in and thank you. Uh, letting us know about Appreciate that. It, it should be. Yep, I'll have to come up and introduce myself to you there. I would love to see you and meet you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. So that was uh, Nancy Cleveland Gray's Armory, uh, and. Uh, it's right on Boulevard Road, 1234 Boulevard Road. That building is literally uh, from the 1890s. So it's pretty cool. And it's a nice thing to do. You can bring your kids, uh, young kids, grandchildren, uh, cruise around, take a good look at uh, what life was like back in another era. And uh, anyway, should be pretty fun. So thanks again for calling in. I appreciate that. And with that said, I've got about, uh, I've only got about five minutes or so Yeah, on the uh, show. So if you have any questions, if you want to sit down and try to figure out a retirement income plan, uh, investing's not that easy. I, the, the math is relatively simple if you know where to apply it, but uh, and everybody's different. No, everybody's different. I know there are a lot of fears out there about you know markets crashing and not coming back. And when we put together a retirement income plan, that we're we're factoring that in. Uh, one of the things I will tell you is that one of the better places right now uh, is in the uh, basically a fixed annuity. And for the longest time, I just stayed away from them when their interest rates were super low. They may start cutting rates again here. That's the, uh, so the rates that you're seeing right now that are available uh, may be going down over the next few months. So if you've got any questions on that, uh, you might want to give us a call, 330-664-0700. Uh, I can send you a link if you'd like. You can email me, bill at bullingtoncapital.com. I'll send you a link to a website, uh, or we can set up a uh, phone meeting to discuss it, or we can meet in person. It's whatever you'd like to do. And uh, with that, I guess I will let you guys go. The uh, um, this is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning. Oh, and uh, my office, by the way, is in uh, Fairlawn, Ohio. If you uh, go to my website, uh, there's a newsletter that you can sign up for there. Uh, and um, I don't write the articles. I just pick them. And when I get the – I've only sent out four or five uh, articles probably every other week. And if I think it's you know, something that might be of interest – to my client base and uh, to anybody else, I'll go ahead and uh, send them on out there. And uh, it, it it's pretty fascinating, actually. There's the uh, there are a ton of really good articles that come out. Uh, Wall Street Journal's good, Barron's, you know, they're all over. I think the service that I'm using to select the articles uh, covers I forget how many thousands of different articles that come out on a on a daily and weekly basis, but um, so I'll just scan through and see if anything comes up that's kind of pertinent and uh, uh, has to do with anything that's going on today in financial markets and uh, select those articles and you know they come out. And I, I, I really liked the service since I signed up for it a long time ago. And it's very, very helpful. If you have questions with uh, individual stocks, if you have questions, I'm actually looking, I'm, I'm trying to work out something to be able to have some uh, legal advisors be guests on the show. And that's a uh, long process. Um, the, uh, trying to get people that, that do this every day, they're, when they do it every day, they are busy. I mean, really busy. So, uh, And there are tons of changes going on all the time. So that, that's not an easy task for someone like me. And uh, But I understand that uh, it, there's a 
oh, huge need out there for information regarding that stuff. It's all gotten so expensive, too. Uh, so you can reduce expenses by planning ahead, and uh, sometimes you can reduce them a lot. It uh, depends on uh, your situation. So anyway, we'll be uh, hosting some shows about that kind of stuff. It's basically estate planning. And I'm looking at a couple of services to add to what we're doing uh, that should also help in that area. Um, that is a bear. I'm telling you, it reminds me of uh, when I was new in the industry. Everybody's out there. They've got all got a product, and it's all the greatest. And uh, it takes forever to set one up and start testing it. And uh, by the time you've got one test done on one piece of software, you probably get at least seven or eight weeks uh, involved. And uh, it's not all day, every day for that time period. Nobody can actually afford to do that. But the uh, uh, it's very time consuming. So I don't want to put something out there that, that's not going to be used or people don't understand uh, or it takes all of our time. Uh, because we're pretty busy. <laughs> People at my firm are really busy. And uh, you know what? Next week, um, I'm going to talk about the structure of firms like ours. Uh, I set my firm up because I, I get an unbelievable amount of support from the custodians that I use. Um, the RIA space, which when I first started doing this over 20 years ago now, um, was relatively new. Now, it's almost as big as the uh, uh, traditional financial services firms and and probably going to pass it if it hasn't already. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, the structure of firms, how you want to look for help, where you can get help, and uh, those kinds of things on next week's show. And feel free to, to reach out to me again. Go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com, and, uh, or uh, call us, 330-664-0700. And I'm going to let you go now. Have a good week, everybody. Good, good luck. Good investing. just caught another edition of the Bullington Capital Report, broadcasting every Saturday at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and you'd like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or online at BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.